This is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymore, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. Today's story deals with Matthew 6.19, when Christ spoke about true riches. The land is torrid most of the year, tropical. The rains are heavy when they come. But mostly the sun shines and palm trees and jungle vegetation glisten under deep blue skies. I know this land well. I know its people. They are good people, and they love their church. And they love God and the mother of God. Most of them are poor, and so the words of our Lord bring them comfort. And I say unto you, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where rust and moth consume and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither rust nor moth consume, nor thieves break in and steal. There are, or there were, many Americans in this land. I am an American priest, born of Latin American parents in the city of New York. But I've lived in this tropical land for so many years that it seems like home. Sometimes a priest feels he belongs to no country, but only to God and the service of God. This philosophy hasn't always set too well with some of my American compatriots. One in particular, Grant McAllister. McAllister lived in a great, rambling old Spanish mansion surrounded by tropical parklands. He was wealthy, immensely wealthy. He had little time for me. But he felt he had to invite me to his home on occasion. Another five years and I'll sell out. And I'll never want to see this horrible country again. Why wait five years? (laughs) Well, I want to cash in on my investment. You're a very rich man already. What do you need with more? Well, that's what makes the world go round, Father. The profit motive. For a guy like me, it means achievement. For a guy like me who started from nothing, it means something, Father, to be able to buy and sell anybody I want or don't want, and to live like a prince, to have people bow and scrape and beg favors for me. Yes, sir, that means something. Only I wonder just what it does mean, my son. Well, it means I can make or break politicians. I can buy them. And it means I was able to marry a woman like Isabel. Yes, you do have a lovely wife with a splendid background. Yes, sir. Isabel could have had her pick, but I was the one who got her. (laughs) You ought to know you married us. Yes, I remember. Uh, Father, you don't approve of me, do you? One has to approve of ambition. But afterwards, one has to question what ambition can do to some men. And you don't like what you think it's done to me, eh? No, I suppose not. (laughs) Well, at least you're honest. 
And that's what I like about you. But I'm honest, too, in my own way. Maybe not in yours, but in mine. I don't draw any punches. I like money. I like power. And it makes me feel good. And beyond that? Beyond it? Well, what do you mean? With all your money, with all your power, how much influence do you think you can buy in heaven? How much influence do you think you have over God? Oh, come now. now someday you'll die. And maybe on that same day, the poorest man in the world will die. Now, let's assume that very poor man has loved God all his life. Do you think you'll be in a better position than he is? You, who have given more homage to power and riches than to serving God? You make me sound like a pagan, Father. The pagan worships false gods. Then so do you. <laughs> You're the only man who could talk to me this way, you know. I get a kick out of it. You see, a poor man who devotes his humble life on this earth, storing up riches in heaven, is uh, far more practical than a man like you. Mm hmm well, let's go into dinner, Father, shall we? Very well. You didn't eat very much, Father. Oh, I'm afraid my conscience wouldn't let me, Isabel. Conscience? Well, when I look at all this food set on this table, I... I find myself thinking of my poor people in the village. Suddenly, I have no appetite. I know. We do what we can for your people, but I suppose it's never enough. Never enough? The way she distributes baskets of food in that village, you'd think she was feeding an army. Well, the people are grateful to her, and they share what they get with each other. <laughs> the uh, poor are very generous and very hospitable. Sure, sure. What have they got to lose? Nothing. Whereas a rich man like you has everything to lose. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go out on the terrace and have coffee. Grant, did did you hear something? Hmm? No, it was nothing. Father, did you hear it? One often hears it. Lately? Uh, it was way up in the hills on the other side of the jungle. The sound carries at night. But they're fighting somewhere. They're always fighting. Revolutions are a dime a dozen in countries like this. They don't mean a thing. Now you take this bandit they've got holed up in the mountains. Suppose he should defeat the government troops. So what? Suppose he takes over the country. So what? Nothing's going to change. He'll be just like any other dictator. I get along with this one, I'll get along with the next one. That's the way it goes in a place like this. See what I mean? The weeks passed. Every day or so, we heard the news over the radio or over the public loudspeaker in the village square. News of scattered fighting in the jungle or up in the hills. But in a land like this, we grow accustomed to this sort of news. As Grant McAllister had said, revolutionary movements are commonplace. As for me, I had enough to do making my rounds and attending to the affairs of my poor little church and trying to keep cool under the blistering sun. Hello, Father. Isabel. Oh, you walk so fast. Uh, I shouldn't in all this heat. It is hot. And you, with a cool lake, a swimming pool, and an air-conditioned palace, <laughs> you spend almost as much time in this village as I do. <laughs> Well, perhaps my conscience bothers me. Well, it shouldn't. Father, it is good to be here. Somehow, I wouldn't want to be blind. Blind to the needs of people who don't have as much as I do. I have money. But money would have no meaning for me unless I could do something good with it. Well, you could write a check. Oh, it's easy to write a check. But that wouldn't satisfy me. I want to be among these people. I want them to know that someone cares. Have, uh, have you noticed anything different about them today? Yes, Father. There's something going on, isn't there? Has anyone said so? No, not to me. 
But you, you do feel that uh, something's in the air. Yes, don't you? Mm. There seems to be a great air of secrecy everywhere. And fear. Yes, that too. Father, have you any ideas? Oh, an idea, but that's all. The bandit? People don't seem to regard him as one. They see him as a potential liberator. Perhaps he is. Perhaps. The days passed. Days when we heard rumors and counter-rumors. A big battle was being fought somewhere deep in the jungle. The radio said the government troops were winning. But it was whispered in the village and in the jungle that all was not going well for the government soldiers. Many were deserting and joining the bandit. Isabel, you understand? You heard what I said? I heard. Stay away from the village. Stay here where you belong. Grant, what's wrong? I don't know. But I don't like what I hear. Well, what do you hear? Well, I've got channels. I hear things. I get news before a lot of other people get it. But what do you hear now? Well, the way I get it, the government troops have taken a beating. And about 5,000 peasants have joined the bandit. And they're all armed. You're worried? Yeah. Why? I thought you said it didn't make any difference to you who came into power. Well, maybe it won't make any difference. Sometimes you can't tell. This bandit's making all kinds of crazy promises. If he gets in, he may have to keep them. Well, what is he promising? Well, it's not what he's actually promising. It's what lies behind his promises. He's talking reform. He's going to reform everything. But the country needs reform. Yeah. Well, years ago, somebody started a reform movement in Mexico. And they wound up confiscating all American interests. Oh, I see. Now, one thing I'm sure of, I'm going to get as much cash as I can lay my hands on and get out of this country fast, just in case. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where rust and moth consume and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth consume nor thieves break in and steal. The long centuries that have passed since our Lord spoke those words have not dimmed their deep significance. I thought of these words so often. I thought of them particularly when, while coming out of the church, I saw Grant McAllister stopping his car. He looked worried. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Grant. And what do you hear? Much less than you do, my son. Uh, things are going bad for the government. Does that mean they may be going well for the people? Uh, maybe some people think so. They'll find out. Oh? I got word last night to meet somebody this morning. One of my friends. Friends? Well, a man like me in a country like this, I have to keep informed. I have to have uh, friends. I see. Well, I've just come back from meeting this fellow. And what he told you worries you? It scares me. You have news about the bandit? Now, Father, you won't like it any more than I do. But he's playing footsie with the communists. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. That may mean disaster if he gets into power. Oh, I, I, I doubt it. It may mean difficult times, but no, not disaster. No. I, I doubt if the communists can destroy God. Nor can they destroy God in the hearts of these people. Nor can they destroy the mother of God. I'm not talking about the church. No, I, I didn't think you were. I'm talking about me, people like me. What's so unique about you and people like you? What? You exist in every walk of life. Not everyone like you is rich. Most of them aren't. Where well, you count a million dollars, most of them count just a few thousand, some just a few hundred. But there's no difference between you. Each one of you is dedicated to the storing up of the almighty dollar. Becomes the basis for all your thinking, the beginning and the end of all consideration. Oh, now look, Father. No, you look. This is a good time to look. Because now, if not before, you're haunted by the possibility that someone or some set of circumstances will take away what you stored up. 
And to you, that's a disaster. The fact that you ignore God is not a disaster. I didn't ask for a sermon. Sermon? To you, the word has a connotation of sorts. Yet, after all, what is a sermon? Simply the word of God. Simply an appeal to follow the teachings of our Lord. I should have known I was wasting my time talking to you. Well, waste a little more, Grant. You waste so much on other matters. Thanks. Only I've got other things on my mind. Yeah, that's right, Father. Other things like money, like material possessions. And while I stand here listening to your sermon, do you know what's happening? Yes, I believe I do. Maybe 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 peasants all armed to the teeth. Most of the bandits by this time are figuring on taking over this country. That alarms you? Yes, it alarms me. And you know why? Because if they take over this country, they'll take over my property. Yes, that alarms me. It's natural that it should. Now, don't tell me you can see my side of things. No one likes to think his property can be confiscated. Well, it can be. I hope it doesn't happen, my son. It came days later. The collapse of the government. The dictator fled from the country. And the victorious bandit leader at the head of his bearded legions entered the capital a few miles from my village. It was a big day, a noisy one, and it occupied world attention as the people hailed their liberator, their new dictator. celebrations continued. But behind the scenes, the sinister pattern of bloody revolution went on. Grant McAllister received a midnight visit from one of his so-called friends, a man named Raul Martinez. All right, all right, let's have it, Martinez. There is to be a big anti-American drive, senor. Your name is on the list. You are to be arrested, detained, held on espionage charges. What? You're crazy. The country is crazy, senor. But what I have told you is true. Espionage charges. The purpose, senor McAllister, is to hold you here and prevent you from liquidating your holdings before the new government can confiscate them. Uh, so that's it. You had better hide, senor. You and your wife, until I can find a way to get you out of the country. It will do you no good to be arrested and put in jail. A lot of things can happen to a foreigner in these times if he is put in jail. Isabel, there's no time for questions. Just pack a few necessary things and your jewels, nothing else. And let's get out of here, fast. All right, Grant. It was almost 2 a.m. when Grant McAllister and Isabel came to my little rectory. I was still up listening to the radio. I turned it off after letting my visitors in. Well, that's the picture, Father. And it smells to high heaven. Well, uh, uh, take this chair. Thank you, Father. It's a laugh. <laughs> Imagine me, a refugee. A fugitive. Uh, would you uh, like a little wine? Yeah, I... I could use a drink of something. Isabel? No, no, thank you, Father. Uh, some coffee, then? I doubt if you'd sleep much tonight, anyhow. I'd enjoy some coffee. Well, let me make it, Father. Will you know where the kitchen is? Yes, I do. Here, my son. Drink this. Oh, thanks, Father. Well, you're taking everything very calmly. They'll be after you next. I won't be the first priest they've been after. Only you've got nothing to lose. No, I suppose not. Unless they put you in jail as a spy. Other priests have been jailed. Yeah. For two weeks, I've been trying to move cash out of the country. Two weeks. Nothing doing. Red tape. And when I say red, I mean red. This country's going communist. They'll rob me of every dime I've got here. Well, you and Isabel should be reasonably safe here for a day or two anyhow. But you must stay indoors and don't show yourselves. Yes. I, I I guess you're taking a chance, too, Father. 
Hiding us, I mean. I can do no less, my son. Oh, the whole thing is crazy. It's like a nightmare. Who'd have thought anything like this could happen? I, I just can't believe it. It's not legal, Father. I've worked and I, I've slaved in this country. I've invested a fortune here, and, and now they're going to steal it, steal everything I've built up. It runs into millions. And they want to steal everything I've got. Everything? They can't steal everything, my son. Nothing they can steal from you could buy you a place in heaven. Here we go again. Oh, Father, I... I'm sorry, but my immortal soul can wait. Right now, I'm worried about more realistic things. Realistic things. Money that buys power and luxury. And Grant McAllister thought his immortal soul could wait. He had no time for his spiritual self, no time for God, no time to contemplate on the true values of life and living. Two nights later, his friend came to see him. There will be a boat waiting. It will take you and the senora to Key West. There you will be safe. Uh, if we get there. If we're not spotted. Mm, chance you must take, senor. All right. When? Tonight. Now. The police are looking for you. Sooner or later, they will think to look for you here. All right. I'll be ready in five minutes. I'll tell my wife. And I've got to leave everything here. Everything. My house. Harry, senor. Goodbye, father. Oh, I wish you'd come with us. My people are here. They're going to need me. Good luck, my son. Thanks. And thanks for hiding us, too. Come, senor. Come, senor. We must hurry. Through the night, through scrublands and tropical marshes, until they came to an isolated part of the coast that overlooked the beach. Look out there. A gunboat. You must wait until it is out of sight. It's not moving. No. So you must wait. Maybe they're waiting for me. Maybe somebody tipped them off. There is always that possibility, senor. Now, listen. The boat is waiting for you down there, between those big rocks. It is a fast motor launch. You can trust the two men you will meet, but do not try to reach the motor launch until the gunboat is gone. They may be watching this part of the beach. Hmm. Goodbye, senor. What? I must go. I can do no more. And I have a wife and children. Good luck, senor. Senora. Adios. Goodbye, Raul. And thank you for everything. And so they waited, hidden in the high grass. Grant McAllister and his wife, Isabel. Grant? Yeah, honey? What are you thinking about? Oh, I don't know. You know what I was thinking? How unimportant our money is at a time like this. All that really matters is for... for us to make things right between ourselves and God. Oh, God. Grant, it's a sin to forget God in our search for riches. A sin to act as though as though the comforts we can buy on earth are are more important than what God has promised we we can find in heaven. You sound like the priest. Do I? Listen, darling. Suppose we both died this very night trying to escape from here. Would we be ready to come face to face with God? Would we? 
Do you remember reading what Christ once said? Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where rust and moth consume and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth consume nor thieves break in and steal. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Maybe it makes sense, honey. Maybe it does it that. Yeah, maybe it makes all the sense in the world. 